Here we have an uh, issue with our drain. We noticed it was backing up inside and leaking a few spots where it shouldn't be. So after running snakes, we discovered that the clog is outside. Here's metal. But then to our surprise, we run into this black stuff, which after a little research on the internet appears to be orange bird. And it's prone to give after many years to either flatten or have or leak and then roots get in it. Here we've been digging and we ran into an area where the root is going right into the sewer pipe. So we have a combination of things going on here. The pipe was starting to fail and the root found it and went right into it. And the other weird thing is we have a piece of pipe here that's broke off overlaying it. So I don't know if they just threw an extra pipe in the trench when they're doing it or what. But either way, we have to replace this. And we're probably going to have to remove this mulberry bush that grew on its own here. The black pipe meets the PVC right here. Now Well, now we know why our tree was growing or our mulberry bush was going so good. It was taken over the sewer line. Cut, cut a chunk out, pulled the joint off, the rubber joint, and capped it. That way I can remove this, shovel that out nicely without worrying about getting stuff in here because this part's all good and clean. Here we have the joint where it came up and then over and you can see they used maybe a concrete and it looks like they propped it up with stones and then poured concrete. So here we are digging out the cast iron that goes through the wall which is about two feet thick. Well, we're going to break it out from the inside I think now. What we're going to do here is we're going to replace this now. Time to go through the wall here. Based on the outside, there wasn't a lot of, there wasn't concrete out there. There was stone, but then they didn't concrete it in. So maybe this only goes in a few inches. I'm gonna start hitting it and I've got a big bar here. And I'm definitely wearing safety glasses. I may have to put my earplugs in. Hopefully we don't have to beat down it too hard. After about a half hour of pounding and a good pint of water, it was a sweating. We ran about the first three or four inches were really tough. So it was a combination of hitting it with this bar, which is awesome, and then using the big hammer with the bar. We now have gotten through and the pipe is moving. Next, we're going to just make sure we have enough room to get through here, which looks like we do. Clean it out. And we'll hold on to this small stuff here because once we fill this back in, it'll be handy. Add some mortar on it and shove it in there. We have the trench all done now. We ended up moving the mulberry bush. We relocated it. So I'm not sure if it's going to live or not. We really cut the roots, but. We relocated it. We then dug out some more of the trench to get deep enough and then we're putting in crushed stone and then I made a measurement to a um, get a 22 and a half inch joint here. Seems to be about right. And I, down there we decided to use a rubber one so we have a little bit of flexibility. And I made a measurement, cut this off with a regular saw and now I'm just cleaning out the air, kind of taking the edge off the inside and then I'm going to also do take the edge off the outside so my joints will go to better, go together better and then we'll start putting it together and then we're going to put more crushed stone on top of the pipe so it's all embedded with crushed stone 
and then from there we're going to use a screen to take out any of the rocks because I want to keep this nice easy digging dirt here. Okay, we have the pipes in and in this case we're not really bending it. It's got a slight, slight degree angle. Just making sure the strap is on good. No, they I did put the pipes tight. If you were going to bend it much, you want to leave a little gap. And we still got a little flexibility to put the top on. So now we can put our crushed stone in here. First, I dry laid the pipes in place to make sure the joints would work. And it looks like they will. Now, what I'll do is put the cleaner on. And having the rubber joint down there is helpful. It's allowing us to flex the pipe more. During changing out the septic line, we've learned some more stuff about our estate here. We um, dug up quite a few chunks of this clay ceramic tile, which we're assuming was probably the original that was put in the house. So at the house. point where they put their first indoor plumbing in, they used this tile, this clay ceramic tile. It appears as if they used a concrete to for the joints. They probably also used the cast iron for inside. And the cast iron came out about six feet from the building through a two foot stone wall. And then they probably were hooked onto the ceramic. At some point in time, probably in the 18 or 1950s, about is what I'm guessing, they switched over to the Orangeburg. They took out this and put in the Orangeburg pipe. Here's a piece of the Orangeburg pipe. I can see it's kind of a like a press material, almost like a press cardboard, super hard, and it does tend to collapse. You can see how it's been. It smells like creosote. And then around 19, late 70s, early 80s, they hooked on to the sewer system, the town sewer system. So that's been disconnected and then they, I guess they ran the line, we're thinking right through here. But we don't, we know it ends down there, it makes a turn. Because I did go that far with the uh, snake. So then we think it goes out through that lawn there, but not possible. Right now, it's now all PVC going into the house, down through here, and into the city septic. 